Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob Scribner. You're at RV Talk Radio. This is episode 56. And we thought we'd do something a little different today and start the show out with a 360 video. So what we're going to do is start this intro like we're doing right now. This is live. And we're playing a 360 video at the same time. So when I launch this (laughs) show on Monday, simultaneously on YouTube, I will launch the 360 video so you can kind of get an idea what it's like here live when we're making a show. So we actually make RV Talk Radio in our RV and the equipment's all on the table. My wife will never get to see her dining room table ever again. And uh, if you look at the 360 video, uh, remember to use high resolution to see it when you're using YouTube. You can look around, you can see we're actually in the RV doing the show. So we always do the show a few days early and it's a podcast. So when we get it all done, we edit it all together, launch it on Monday morning. We make a video version and we have the podcast version. And I want to remind everybody that you can use your cell phone and actually put a uh, download podcast listening software And if you go in the search area, search in iTunes and find RV Talk Radio in there and put it on your cell phone and you can listen to us like a radio station. What's nice, and that's why we have an hour show, is you can play it all during the week. You don't have to listen to the whole thing all at once. And some people like our video version. Some people just like the podcast version. And so today we're adding a little more. We're adding the 360 version. So I hope you enjoy it. This is just something a little different. We're getting ready to switch modes into our next subject on the show, and I'll be shutting off the camera. So thank you very much for listening to RV Talk Radio. I hope you enjoyed the 360 video. Anyway, guys, let's move on. All right. Well, that was kind of interesting, something we haven't done before. So the camera's off now, and so... If you're listening to this podcast through YouTube, there'll be a link on the screen and you'll be able to click on that link and actually watch a 360 video of me actually doing the podcast. Now I need to remind you is, is uh, 360s are really fun and a lot of people love them. However, if you're kind of old school and you're kind of not used to, Uh, The technology, uh, a lot of people will play them and say, oh, it looks kind of fuzzy. And the reason is you have to go down at the bottom of your screen. There's a little star or a little gearbox. You click on that. You need to change your quality to 720 high definition or HD. And that clears up the picture. And it kind of reloads the video onto your screen and it clears it up. What's really neat is you can take your cursor and move around uh, on the screen and see and, you know, uh, see the actual podcast, look around the RV, whatever you want to do. We also are going to post this on Facebook. And if it's on Facebook, it also you can use your uh, cell phone to watch it. You can actually move your cell phone and move around the, uh, around the area with your cell phone. It's pretty cool. So anyway, it was just something a little different we wanted to try. 360 videos are kind of uh, different uh, as far as when you go to edit them. They don't splice together quite the same and so it's hard to make an actual sh- uh, show out of them and put all the special effects in them so what we try to do is take one take one take only and and so we turn it on there might be a little bit of moving around at first and then we talk and then pretty much show you what's going on uh, the splice 360 uh, can be done, but uh, we're at least with our software, it tends to take the quality away a little bit and puts a little black dot at the top of the screen, uh, which you can only see if you look up. And I haven't quite figured out how to overcome that other than maybe getting some new software for it. But yeah, 360 videos, pretty cool. 
a little different. Uh, it really is fun to watch them on your cell phone because you can actually move your cell phone around and feel like you're actually there. So it's kind of neat. Anyway, moving on. The other thing I was going to talk to you about is uh, if you notice, if you watch the video, if you get a chance, you'll notice that my poor wife has never seen her dining room table for about a year now. And uh, between the microphone that we have on a special uh, holding device and uh, laptops and we're constantly downloading camera files, etc., she very, very rarely can we actually eat dinner at our dining room table. And uh, luckily we have a little bar type thing and that's actually where we eat our, our meals and stuff. So uh, my wife, I, I salute to her that she's patient with me and all this equipment. And then I've also got a mixer board off to my left and it's and I'm always got a camera out downloading files and and it's always chaos on that table. So I commend my wife for putting up with it. So you can see doing a podcast from an RV can be uh, uh, fun. Um, equipment's a little uh, can be a little expensive uh, and it takes up space, but it's fun to do. So if you ever decide to do a podcast, um, you can always contact us and I can always tell you how we do it. And, of course, I'm sure we always hope that you can find even better ways to do it. So there you go. Having a little fun today. I uh, wanted to take the time to apologize, actually, to some of our uh, listeners. Uh, last week, we were making a server change. And we are moving this uh, the website of RV Talk Radio from one server to another. Uh, we're moving some other server uh, websites too, and everything went successful except <laughs> RV Talk Radio. Uh, apparently, when we FTP'd the files down, not everything copied down properly. So then, when we launched it on the new server, uh, and one of our listeners was nice enough to tell me that like something was definitely wrong, and I went there and like, oh my goodness, so turned out we had to do the procedure over again and we got it up and running within the, by the next day so if you happen I think that was on Tuesday or Wednesday of last week uh, um, episode 55 that it might have been down or you didn't weren't able to listen to the show uh, we apologize for the inconvenience uh, had to make some adjustments we're just moving some uh, consolidating some servers and uh it just went amok. Oops, I apologize. It was my fault. I We moved some major sites, and all of them went perfect. And then this one, I uh, don't know why everything didn't download properly, but uh, we got it. And kind of frustrating, but we are up and running. The uh, other big news that was going on here around the RV park is we had a nasty monsoon come through. And uh, uh, we're talking major rain like two inches they said in about an hour and you know when that happens we also get a really torrential wind with that and so uh apparently rv windows when it gets rain pushed to the side and high winds um rv windows have little breathing um slits at the bottom and so during that particular m moment uh, we actually were starting to get a little water through the windows. But other than that, I mean, the RV held up great. But, man, talk about a lot of water. And uh, when the thunder hits, when those go over, yeah, it's really close. And, man, this whole RV rattles. And you ought to see the look in my pet's eyes when it happens. They go like, what was that, Mom and Dad? So, yeah, these monsoons, uh, you got to be on your toes. There are some folks uh, in Phoenix uh, uh, that literally, you would think since they live here that they'd know better to try not drive through water and stuff, but they still do it and get stuck and lose their car. And um, people just get in a hurry. It's like, uh, I, I, you know, it's just sometimes uh, nature, you just got to let it do its thing. Um uh, Phoenix does their best to prepare all the roads and have pump stations at certain bypasses and stuff where they have uh, water issues, but uh, things still go amok. And so, anyway, lots of water in a very short time. And these monsoons are really interesting to watch. So, 
Anyway, that was something we learned about the RV. She's tough. Um, our Montana held up great, and it went through some pretty good weather there. And we're pretty proud of how well it did. So there you go. So for this next section, I'd like to uh, create a new little module I've never done before. And it's going to be called... RV, RV cooking, cooking with Rob. Yep. So, <laughs> uh, I want to talk about a recipe of something I cook, and Sherry, Sherry makes me cook it. And it, it's it's using sauerkraut. I know, guys. Some of you guys are like, not sauerkraut. But <clears throat> anyway, so I was raised with sauerkraut. My mom made us eat sauerkraut on New Year's Eve to have good luck all year. That's how bad it was. And so I I didn't like sauerkraut right off the bat, but over time, sauerkraut and kielbasa is great stuff. But what I want to talk about is cooking with sauerkraut and using a particular meat. So have you ever gone to the grocery store and you've seen those beef ribs and they're really, sometimes they're, not, they're short sometimes and they're cut separately, but they have a whole bunch of meat on them. And you ask yourself, what the heck am I well, those look good, but how in the heck would you cook them and stuff? So here's something that I do with beef ribs, the ones that are really meaty. Uh, you don't cut them. They're already usually already cut. Uh, I suppose you can get the thinner ones, but I'm talking these real beefy, meaty um, ribs that you get at the you can find at the grocery store. So anyway, so go get yourself uh, or get a cake pan and. Uh, one of those elongated ones and stuff. Anyway, and so you're gonna do this in a cake pan, and get your oh, oven up to about 350, 375, uh, maybe 400 or so for an RV oven, because you know how that works. Uh, they're never at the temperature you actually set them. So the next thing you want to do is get your uh, sauerkraut, and I like farmers, and uh, and you crack that baby open, and of course it, the whole RV smells like the kitty's litter box so anyway um take some uh maybe half the jar of the kebab of the sauerkraut and put it in the cake pan and layer it like a layer and until you got the whole cake pan covered with sour at the bottom of, of the cake pan of course so anyway uh then get your ribs and lay them kind of uh not flat but on their sides all across that cake pan. So maybe you have eight ribs, put them all across that cake pan. Then take the remaining, uh, and you can season those if you want. You don't really have to, because what we're doing is using the juices from the sauerkraut to flavor the meat. But you can put a little bit of uh, Johnny Jock salt or something on them too, and it won't hurt them. But remember, that's gonna also go into the sauerkraut. And if you like sauerkraut, you may not like all those seasonings. So anyway, then once you get the ribs laid in there in a nice pretty way, you take the rest of the sauerkraut and start um, loading it around the ribs in between them, around them, and really kind of pack them in there. And then put that baby in the oven and start cooking. And I can guarantee you that your RV is going to smell pretty darn good. So uh, it's kind of a combination of, oh man, there's something beefy cooking in the RV. At the same time, it's got that litter box, kitty litter box effect. So it's kind of like mixed emotions, but it's to me, it's, this smells awesome in the RV. Anyway, but you know how sauerkraut is. Anyway, so you run that in there, and I don't really have a time for you, maybe 20, 25 minutes, and then poke your head in there and see if the ribs are browned on the top. If they have started to brown, uh, then pull it out, then r turn the ribs over. And so you can brown the other side of the ribs and put it back in the oven and let them cook. And it could be another 20 minutes or half hour, whatever. Uh, it all depends on how hot you have your um, oven at. Anyway, but let me tell you, your RV is going to smell so good. Anyway, so when you got it all browned and maybe uh, pull that out of the oven, check the meat, make sure it cooked all the way through. Depends how thick of the, the uh, ribs are. And there you go. You've got dinner. Oh, my God. And you could, you know, maybe add a, a vegetable to it. But talk about yummy. Oh, my God. If you Even if you don't like sauerkraut, 
the ribs alone are just the flavor that comes from the sauerkraut really takes takes you away. It's good stuff. So there's my cooking with Rob in the RV. Uh, <laughs> uh, give it a try. See if you like it. Uh, if you don't like sauerkraut, um, I don't know. But you might want to try it and don't eat the sauerkraut. It's just use it for flavoring. Anyway, it's good stuff. Well, it's getting about that time to try to think about what Sherry and I are going to do next weekend or so. And uh, we were going to go to San Diego, and we decided not to, because uh, we were kind of recontemplating our plans a little bit. And I think we may be thinking about going up north, back up to Washington for a short time. Reason being is, um, see, I got a truck that has a beautiful canopy that's sitting in someone's yard. <laughs> and I'm thinking about picking that up and bringing it down here and because we're leaving our rv in one spot for long periods of time it's like i could have my canopy on there and it's kind of nice for the shade and and being able to store things in the back in the shade and stuff like that so the other thing is i was thinking about when i went up there to go get that that i go continue which is in oregon up to washington go up to our storage unit where our little love couch it's a two-section couch that matches our chair and we really hate the couch we have here in the rv so i was thinking about throwing that getting out of storage throw it in the back of the truck since i got the cover on it right <laughs> and bring that back down and then pull the one that's out of here and just uh give it away if i can give it away otherwise i'll throw it away it does have a bed built into it so if you happen to be in arizona and like to have a couch uh, uh, L-shaped couch with a bed built into it. It's a nice couch and everything. It's just not what we want in here. And uh, uh, the couch we have up there matches our chair that we replaced. So that's kind of the plan. And then uh, there's some more shopping that we want to do up there. Uh, um, we'll tell you more about that as we go. And uh, gives us a chance to stop in uh, Oregon also to check on family. The Sherry's folks are uh, up there and um, we like to check in with them and physically see how they're doing every six months or so so uh, we're getting due for that and kind of looking forward to seeing that so uh, I think going up to the northwest for a, a couple of days or a week or so is coming up here and we'll kind of let you know and if we drive up there'll be some great photography and some places that we want to uh, film and um, I like and our stuff that we have is up in Anacortes, Washington. This is a beautiful time of year to go up to the Northwest, so we kind of look forward to it. That's the best time to see the Northwest. And uh, yeah, it'll still rain once in a while, but i tell you, when the sun comes out up there in the summer, it's beautiful. So that's the plan so far. I think some of the other additions that we have coming up here is we're actually saving our allowance <laughs> for uh, a new... Um, zoom lens uh the action kind of sports camera lens that we need to purchase that allow us to uh, get more wildlife on the run without having to focus it it'll all be built into the camera um, and the other thing is uh we're looking at another wireless um, remote mics that we can um, integrate to all the different cameras uh, that's a little more high tech, a few more channels on it. The ones we have are, um, pick up static really easy. So, uh, yeah, we're just saving our allowances and that. And that's why we always ask people anytime you want to help support us or become a, a patron, uh, that's what we use the funds for is to help, uh, support our channel and, and support, uh, our equipment and try to bring you guys better and better stuff. Anyway, um, and the other thing I want to remind you is, like I do on every show, and I got to keep reminding you guys, uh, please don't feel free to contact us. Love to hear uh, your stories. Like to hear, uh, uh, we get really nice comments. We love to hear about the comments. Uh, anything that you'd like us to talk about that's RV related or, or outdoor travel related, we can do that on this show. And um, if there's some critiquing or uh, uh, feedback positive or negative if it's done in a constructive manner we'd love to hear that too so please take the time to contact us just go to our website at rv talk radio go to the contact page right there it's private nobody sees it uh, you can also email me directly at rob rob at rv talk radio and shoot me a note that way 
and that comes right to my cell phone, by the way. And uh, of course, you can always go to the website or not well, to the Facebook pages, uh, preferably the right. If you're for RV Talk Radio, go to the RV Talk Radio Facebook page. Go to the messages up above. You can dialogue with us live. Uh, if we're available to talk, we'll yak with you right there. So yeah, lots of ways to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Love your feedback. And we love constructive feedback, too. And uh, uh, we're actually modifying a few things on our site again. Um, and we're actually reducing some of our sites and shutting down some stuff that's just too much to keep up. So uh, we reduced our Facebook um, groups a little bit to just one. We uh, are shutting down a couple of sites that I just don't have time to maintain anymore. And uh, kind of miss some, but like uh, Amazing RV TV, I'm going to shut that down. I just can't keep up. We also have uh, RV Travel Videos. I'm shutting that down. And RV Social Network it was neat, but it's you have to babysit that a lot. And so I'm shutting them down, guys. Sorry, <laughs> it's just too much for me and Sherry to keep up. And we're planning on getting very busy uh, pretty soon. So uh, we're going with the things that have been working really well. Just like RV Talk Radio was kind of an experiment last year, and along with some of those other things, and some take and some don't. And then some are just too hard to keep up. So, hey, it was worth a shot on some of those. But, yeah, we're streamlining things a little more, uh, making it a little easier for everybody to understand uh, how the sh site goes. Um, and anyway, so you never know what's going to come up next. But, yeah, we're kind of slimming her down a little bit, guys. Another big concern Sherry and I have going on here is how in the heck are we going to be able to support our Seahawks? <laughs> so uh, down here in Arizona, obviously, they're into Arizona stuff. And uh, Sherry and I, when we were in Washington, it was cold enough. We always had our stocking caps with our little <laughs> Seahawks hat. Well, it's a little hot down there for that, so I may have to order some new gear. But, uh, yeah, um, I'm so used to being up in Washington that that everything's kind of works around the Seahawks. Well, that's not true down here in Arizona. So I've got to kind of get used to finding a way to watch the games because uh, obviously the television down here is aimed at the Arizona uh, football team and we want to watch our Washington uh, Seahawks. And uh, good, bad, or indifferent, that's just the ones that we've kind of grown up with and we uh, kind of like them when we root for them. And I guess I better root for Arizona while I'm down here, too. Uh, go, go, go. But we really want the Seahawks. But <laughs> anyway, so I was trying to figure out how we're going to deal with that when they start playing games. So uh, if you have any feedback of the best way we can monitor our Seahawks and watch their games, uh, because we're so used to our prime television shows up there in Washington, kind of stopped everything so we could watch a, a Seahawks game. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to see them um, here in Arizona like I did up there. Uh, I also found out in Arizona there's actually one or two pubs that are actually devoted to the Seahawks. Don't know how that happened, but so we're going to try to connect with that too. So anyway, yeah, Seahawks, go. So it's kind of amazing. I'm sitting here uh, doing a show and Actually, a monsoon starting to pass through, so it's kind of interesting. It's trying not to look out the window, but I've got these big, dark, eerie clouds going through. Got lightning bolts all over the place. And what really amazes me during this windstorm part of it is our hummingbirds are still going at it, trying to get their food from the hummingbird feeder, even with the winds blowing at, I would guess, 30, 35 miles per hour. And the RV rocking and all that stuff. And here's these little hummingbirds running around trying to get something to drink. I guess they just like, all right, it's just a monsoon. But anyway, it's kind of amazing to watch this stuff. It's like, uh, you know, it's 100 degrees every day here and stuff. And all of a sudden, just out of the blue, the humidity picks up for a couple of days. And these uh, moisture, I guess, that comes up from the Gulf or from the Mexico area uh, come along. And it kind of... Uh, uh, creates these monsoons and I don't know all the science behind it but it's really interesting to watch them come through and uh, 
course, when it rains and stuff, our water has no place to go because it doesn't soak into the ground. So that's when the washes go to work. <laughs> and they don't always work either. <laughs> and it seems like every time somebody's got to try to cross one with their car and get stuck. Anyway, that's just how it is here. So, uh, yeah, if you ever get down to uh, Arizona in the summertime, uh, not unusual to see these monsoons. Yeah, it's days like this, I kind of wish I was back at the Northwest. <laughs> it's not very many intimidating things that go on up there. If it rains, it rains mildly. If it's uh, stormy, it's pretty non-intimidating. And uh, it never gets as hot as it does down here. But, uh, you know, it does rain a lot and it is cloudy. But I guess you have to leave a place sometimes to realize just uh, how much you appreciate it. But, yeah, someday I'll get back up there. Definitely missing it. Really, uh, right now, it's so hard to uh, uh, even leave the RV. It's too hot for the dog. It's too hot to do anything. Even the evenings right now are just too hot to do anything. So it's like uh, a little depressing. I guess it'd be just like your winter time when you just too much snow and you can't do anything and you're homebound. But that's just how it is with traveling. And sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So, anyway. Got kind of a short show this week. Got things we got to do and it's a kind of a busy week and just can't seem to get enough time to uh, uh, get the uh, podcast uh, completely filled up this week. So I apologize for that. But anyway, uh, lots of things going on. We'll make sure and have a full show for you next week. Uh, don't forget that this show is complemented with a 360 video. So if you go to the YouTube version of the show, you'll see launched uh, at the same time a little, uh, I think it's about a minute, two minute uh, 360 video that you might get a kick out of seeing the beginning of the show and how we do it. So anyway, I want to thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate our listeners. Don't forget to get a con, you know, to contact us and, and send us notes and, and talk with us. And uh, be safe out there. So from Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio, we want to wish you guys a wonderful week and we'll talk to you next Monday. Bye now. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.